Okay. Yeah. Um, I uh, um, was a was a young fifteen year old lad at high school um, when I uh, came back to school after the Christmas holidays, and there were three fellows who I sort of vaguely knew but weren't particularly friends with, who um, unbeknownst to me at the time had received the Holy Spirit and been baptised during the school holidays. And um, I was, one of the subjects I was doing at school was, was music and um, at uh, lunchtime I had some music homework to do that involved working out some harmonies on a piano. And I went into one of the music practice rooms to use the piano and these three guys were there and uh, they were over the other side of the room. So I just sat down, started doing what I was doing and they were talking about God. And um, after a few minutes, I sort of stopped doing what I was doing and just eavesdropped on their conversation because I thought it was really weird that um, three school kids would be talking about God. Um, and uh, after a while, they figured out that I was uh, eavesdropping on their conversation and they asked me what I thought uh, about God and I had no thoughts whatsoever um, and never really thought about God at all. Um, to cut a long story short, um, I uh, thought they were nuts, forgot all about it, um, and I used to avoid these three guys um, whenever possible, if I saw them walking down the corridor at school, I'd turn around and walk the other way and just generally try and avoid them. And I did that fairly successful for um, probably a couple of months. And I just got to that point where I'd forgotten all about what they'd said and all that sort of thing. And the Lord just gave me an almighty sort of poke in the ribs. And all of a sudden, I just started thinking about it again and um, uh, couldn't, couldn't sleep. Um, uh, for thinking about this and so on. And so I decided uh, that I would pray about this Holy Spirit, whatever that was. And um, so I prayed for the first time since I was a little kid. Um, and I, I kept on praying. And um, uh, it was uh, three weeks later and I received the Holy Spirit. And I was sitting on, on the overflow pipe from a reservoir out in the middle of a paddock in the middle of nowhere. And um, I knew something had happened to me, but I didn't know what it was. And um, I, I went home that afternoon and I got, one of them had given me a little Bible and uh, some pamphlets and all that sort of stuff. And uh, one of the scriptures that I'd seen was Acts chapter two. And I looked at this Acts chapter two and I saw the description of people receiving the Holy Spirit and I went, that's what just happened to me. And that was like a lights on moment when I realized what had happened. Anyhow, um, I, I decided then that I would go to one of their meetings and that I wanted to be baptized and so on. And I told my parents about what had happened uh, thinking that they would be really excited because I knew my mother was a little bit religious when she was a kid and she sometimes talked about when she used to sing in the choir and all this sort of stuff. And um, I got quite the opposite reaction. It was, uh, um, how dare you turn against the Church of England? And I didn't know that we were Church of England. We never went to church and you know, the only time I ever heard about the Church of England is when you had to fill out some form and put it on. Um, and um, my parents were, were very hostile against the things of the Lord and um, made life very difficult for me and um, wouldn't let me go to any meetings, um, wouldn't let me see these three guys at school um, and um, wouldn't let me get baptised and so on. And um, <clears throat> it was, uh, the next few months were fairly interesting because I sort of survived off of a a starvation diet, I suppose. And um, because I was uh, young and my parents, you know, they threatened to sue the assembly if they baptised me and, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, it was quite a, it was quite a difficult one for the Adelaide assembly at the time um, as well, because um, here I was wanting to get baptised, but, um, you know, they were being threatened with legal action and all this sort of stuff. And, um, 
uh, the end, end result was once I turned 16, um, it appeared that there wasn't a real lot that my parents could do about it. So I had to wait a little while to, to get baptised. But of course, when I did, that caused more problems. And my parents ended up um, sort of saying, well, if you want to follow this religion, you're no son of ours and you're not welcome in our house and all this sort of stuff. So I found myself um, living on my own. Um, I was still studying at school. Um, and um, uh, there was a, a, a brief reconciliation for a period and then the same thing happened again. And um, so it was a fairly turbulent time, but at that time it didn't seem that way. Um, the Lord just blessed every single aspect and uh, provided in so many ways. And uh, it was really great. Um, and um, uh, as time went on, I got a sort of settled in the Lord and things like that. And um, then when I started going out with my now wife, Trudy, um, the same thing happened all over again. And, um, you know, they were very, um, very anti. Um, when we got married, they didn't come to our wedding and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the Lord made up for all of that in, in so many ways and, and really blessed us. And um, uh, later on, when we had our first child, um, Trudy was actually working as a doctor's receptionist at the time and there were complications around the pregnancy um, and um, uh, the doctor she worked for and two other specialists all advised to abort the pregnancy. When she went and had the first scan, they told us there were problems with the baby's limbs um, not growing in the right places and that we should abort the pregnancy. And, you know, we just put it to the Lord. And um, um, when Daniel was born, he was perfectly healthy. Um, nothing wrong with him at all. And um, uh, it was it was just amazing. And then when he was a toddler, I remember uh, we get, went to a, a young people's uh, barbecue. And um, uh, I remember Daniel was sort of running around. There were a few other kids his age that he was playing with and so on. And he sort of, he always had this hot fascination with hot things. He used to like standing in front of the oven and feeling the warmth and stuff like that. And uh, I remember at this barbecue um, talking with someone and I just looked up and um, Daniel was probably three or four metres away from me. Um, and just as I looked up, he was by the barbecue and um, he was about eye level with the barbecue at that stage. And I saw him put his hand down on the barbecue hot plate. And um, as his hand hit the hot plate, I heard the sizzle that, you know, when you put a chop on a barbecue, the sizzle noise. And I went, just praise the Lord and just rushed over there and grabbed his hand and, and, and prayed with him and looked at his hand. And there was no burn, there was no red mark, there was no anything. It was just perfectly normal. And, and that sizzle noise as his hand went down, I can still hear in my head today, that's, uh, you know, 30 odd years later. And uh, over the years, many other miracles. Um, I was uh, um, healed of uh, cerebral meningitis. Um, and I didn't realize it's quite a, that's an infection of the brain stem and it's quite a severe disease. And um, I had had headaches for about a week and uh, they weren't going away and they were just getting worse and um, had other symptoms as well and ended up going to the doctor and um, got a blood test and the results came back that I had this cerebral meningitis and the doctor wanted to put me straight in hospital and all this sort of stuff and was talking real doom and gloom. But by this stage, I was already starting to feel better and um, that was fine. And within a couple of days, it was gone. And, and that was the sort of the end of that until a number of years later when somebody I worked with um, got cerebral meningitis and um, he, he nearly died. He spent three months in hospital with it. He was off work for um, nearly 12 months. And when he came back to work, he was not the same person. His brain was obviously affected and um, he was very sort of slow in everything and um, took him probably a couple of years to get back to what you might describe as normal. And I saw this man go through this and I thought, well, praise the Lord, that could have been me. Um, and I just sort of never realised that at the time. Um, had lots of other things along the way. I probably talked for long enough, but um, the Lord's been very gracious 
um, to us over the years and um, can't praise him to thank him enough. Amen. Um, hello. Um, my testimony starts from my parents when I was, because um, I was brought up in the Lord. So um, I grew up going to church, <coughs> listening to talks and testimonies about receiving the Holy Spirit. But because um, I was little, I never really knew what that meant. Um, so when I was about seven, um, I, I started to pray for the Holy Spirit, but I didn't have the right mindset and I didn't receive the Holy Spirit. So when I was eight, I sort of just gave up on trying to receive the Holy Spirit. But then when I was nine, um, I did not change my mindset, but like I realized that, um, that I had to have a personal connection with God and that I didn't have to do it because anyone else told me to do it. It was just because I wanted to receive the Holy Spirit. So um, um, one Sunday in 2018, um, all the kids went up to go and pray with the pastor upstairs in the hall. And, um, my, and um, while I was praying, um, I, I just, I, um, in my head, I was asking the Lord to give me the Holy Spirit. Because um, because I wanted to be right with him, not because anyone else told me to do it, but because I knew that he was the right thing for me and that the world would never give me anything better. And then, um, so my tongue had started to change while we were at the meeting, but I hadn't quite received the Holy Spirit yet. So um, when we got home, um, we prayed some more, and then um, I spoke in a new language that I had never learned before. And um, the next week, I was baptized by full immersion as it's there in the Bible. And um, since then, it's been a great walk in the Lord. And um, I've had a lot of healing miracles. Some that happened uh, after a long time of prayer or after like a short time of prayer. And um, so since I was brought in the Lord, I didn't have any sort of big miracles, but um, I was healed of um, hay fever, which took about uh, I think like a year because when it was hay fever season the first time and um, I prayed and then um, my eyes started like itching less and I, and I got less of an itchy throat but then um, I still like wanted it to go away fully so then the next year when it was hay fever season I prayed again and then my hay fever was completely gone by the end of it so I prayed a lot for that and um, also some um, straight away Miracles were um, um, one day um, before we were going to go on our camping trip with the fellowship, which we go on every year. Um, my mom said that she felt really sick. So then um, um, me and my brother laid hands on her. Um, this is the night before. And then, um, and then um, as soon as we said amen, then she was healed and she could go to camping the next day. So that was good. And um, Another one is that um, one morning I woke up and I had this really bad fever. Like I had a headache and I couldn't see properly. So um, I went into my parents' room and I asked them if we could have some prayer because I was going to do um, home learning that day for um, school. Um, and yeah, so um, I prayed to the Lord and um, I just asked him in my head to take it away from me because I knew that he could do it and that he will heal me. So then um, as soon as I said amen, I felt the headache leave me and I felt and I felt a lot better after that and I could stand up again, which I couldn't do while I was feeling sick. And um, so yeah, I pray to the Lord that like, even if I have all these small testimonies, that, um, they're still pretty big because the Lord has showed that even in the little things, he still cares. So yeah, that gives me comfort. And also that, um, like the creator of the universe has chosen us out of billions of people on this earth to be his children. And like, so, you know, it just makes us, you know, the really the specialist people on earth. Um, so yeah, I <laughs> thank the Lord for that. And um, I can't wait for his return. Amen. Mm -hmm.